Okay, so uh, this video is going to try to make a better, m better attempt to do this button read uh, with the the animation, and I'll you know I'll just say there's another way around this problem, and it, the real the real root of the problem is the delay here, and the delay, you know, shuts the processor down if you want to think of it that way. It just stops doing anything. And while it stops doing that, it's not reading our button because it's not running our code up here to, to check it. Okay, so that that is where the real issue is. So another solution here is to remove the delay. And I will try to do a video with that too. So in other words, you would, and that really is a good way, it's a really important way to, to approach some programming in, in the Arduino because, um, you know, delays, it, it's much like processing, if we ever use any kind of delay or sleep function in processing, really shutting down any opportunity to get input from the user, and it causes real problems. There is a workaround for this that I think is worth looking at right now with with the Arduino at least, and that's called using a an interrupt. And the interrupt is a a great uh, a great feature of the uh, microprocessor. And what the what it lets you do on the Uno at least, it lets you attach, and it depends which uh, micro which which uh, version of the Arduino you're using, but on the Arduino Uno we can attach a button to uh, pin two or pin three. We can we can have both of these two, but so we only have two opportunities to use it. There's only two pins um, with which this is going to work, but basically what we're able to do is. Uh, use one statement called attach interrupt that is going to say hey listen to button 2 all right and when you hear some when, when, you know listen as in pull it check the check the level of it and when you see that level change so for instance there's different types but the level change we'll look for is when it goes from low to high because that's how our button works right our button is sensing the voltage coming in from this push button and that voltage is 5 volts here these two pins are, are the same pin, and these two pins are t not the same as this side, but these are these two pins here are also the same pin. There's no voltage. This is 5 volts coming up. It doesn't flow through to the other side in, until you press the button. When it does flow through, some of it goes into the pin and it reads a high there. So you watch the pin, all right? Well, watch pin 2 because that's where our pin is attached, and when the interrupt notices that pin going from low to high, it immediately runs some code in a function that we've given it. We've already set up our function, so we're in good shape. Even when it's in delay, it manages to do this. So this is actually a really simple workaround, and it works really well. Now, now uh, you've got to be a little careful. This is the syntax we want to use, this recommended one. So let's just stick with that. So there's this extra little bit digital pin to interrupt inside of this attach interrupt function. You must use this. The long and the short of it is the pin number is not the same as the number that it wants. Okay, this ISR number uh, is not really the same number. So, so let's just not worry about that. And we'll grab this code, the recommended version, and what we're going to do is we're going to put in our pin 2. We're going to uh, pass in our uh, function. All right, this is going to be our function that we want uh, to run. And I think ISR, it says it's a special kind of function that we'll use to, to do some work. And um, it's an interrupt service routine. Okay, so you've ri we've written an interrupt service routine already. Is that exciting? And we have to tell it which mode. And mode is just uh, here. These are the modes. And they're just telling it uh, how to deal with it. So it's kind of like in processing, you have different ways to check for a mouse pressed. Um, you know, one is when you push it down, one is when you push it down and let it go. Similar idea. So, like change, for instance, it will notice any change. So if it goes from the voltage that it's reading goes from low to high, that's when you push the button down. But when you let go of the button, that it goes from high to low. Now, change would be called on both of those. So we don't want that. We don't want it on low. 
either because it would just be firing over and over again when the button's not being pushed. We want rising. Rising or falling, but I'm going to use rising. So that's going to be when the voltage changes from low to high. Okay, so rising is going to be our mode. Let's drop this in here. So this has to be done in setup. Okay, so I don't think it matters in this order here. So this is going to be our button pin. And the ISR was called anim uh, check button. And I'm going to remove this part of check button, OK? I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm not going to print it. I'm not going to check this button high stuff. OK, I'm just going to, and I'm going to get rid of this because that's also part of your statement. So I'm just going to toggle it. We already know the button was pressed. So this is kind of a poor name now. But we know the button was pressed, so we're just going to toggle the animation variable. So this is check button. Should change that to toggle animation or something. And this is rising all caps. And that should do it. That's the only change other than doing proper syntax that we <laughs> that we need to do. Okay, so there we go. That hopefully that was the only one. You gotta be really careful the way I commented out this stuff. That probably isn't a great idea. I should do a better job and just clean that up. Now animation was left as false. So it should be off. Animation. Oh, I'm still calling check button inside of here over and over again. No longer. So you're going to have to clean all of this stuff up. But we only now are going to do a check button. We're going to let the um, interrupt take care of running check button. So it's off. It's staying off. It's not running. I'm going to press the button once it turns on. I'm going to press the button again. Look at that. Off. Worked all right away. It was still in the loop. It wasn't lighting up the the um, stuff. So you'll notice it kind of mid animation when it turned back on. That time I, I just timed it right. But if I turn it off, it's somewhere in here right now. I turn it on. It's picking up where it was in the for loop. But it works really well now. So. Hopefully that's a uh, something in, that you like. I know students sometimes find that a little confusing at first. It really is a different concept, and it's just this idea of, you know, think of the processor having a little bit of extra code in there. It really does. It has some routines that it runs very frequently that we, knew, we never knew about. It was always running these routines. We just never made use of them. And we're just saying, hey, when, you, when you're when you doing those scans of those buttons, uh, you know, on button two, we'd like you to uh, check it for this rising state. When you see button two go from low to high, then run this function for us. And we have two opportunities on button two and button three to do that on the Uno. So uh, that might be something, something good to look at. There's a little bit more in here that you should read about. Um, and... Uh, but we've it's that's got it working for us at least so i i would suggest you try that out and i would also suggest you check out the next video which will be about eliminating delay because that's really important that is something we really want to try to do a little bit makes the code a little more challenging for sure uh but uh, it's absolutely essential we get to that step before we try to build anything uh, more complicated than this